Okay, I'm starting now. Oh. All right. So today's lesson is on cybersecurity. And it is a really important topic. So we're going to be talking about that today. So what is cybersecurity? So cybersecurity is the act of protecting networks or our devices and data from unauthorized access of other people. And those people who are trying to steal our data are known as hackers. So simply, cybersecurity is protecting your computer or your entire network. So these are just some examples of cybersecurity that I would like to talk about today. So the four major points or threats are viruses, and there are also ransomwares, and there are also spywares, and there is a way called phishing. So I will get to all of these concepts in today's class. So what are the hackers trying to do to us? So with all the viruses and malwares, the hackers are trying to steal our personal information. So such personal information are your names, your phone numbers, your passwords, your date of births, and your social security numbers. So by stealing your names and passwords, the hackers may disguise as you and do bad things, such as stealing money and committing crime, and etc. So by using your name, they can um, loan money from the bank and they're gonna recognize as you. So it makes you the one who's taking the money from the bank. So they're basically using your name and your identity to steal and they can also commit crimes and they can all blame it on you because they have your name, phone numbers and more. So these type of bad acts are what the hackers are trying to do to us with all the malwares. So how do these really happen? So aren't these tricks obvious or aren't our computer or networks already safe? So how do these hackers get our information? Well, our computer is safe, but it is our actions which allows hackers to use it. So many of us are unaware of these type of threats. So to avoid these, um, we will learn about them today and how to protect against them. So first I'm going to be talking about computer viruses. So computer virus is a malicious software or so-called malware that spreads harming your computer. They slowly destroy the computer by executing a code which is a written language for computers. And we will get to codes in our future class. So don't worry about that. And the code forms from a file, then expands to your entire computer. So this slowly, this slows the computer down and later eventually makes it unusable. So the picture on the left here, um, the top picture here shows an actual virus so that's the shape of the virus that gets in our body and spreads infecting our red cells, red blood cells. And um, down below is an example of a code, which is a computer virus. So know the difference between two. And the reason why it's called a computer virus is because how it spreads like a virus that gets in our body. Now, if you get a computer virus, um, Screens like these may show up. Um, a really common one is a blue screen, which you can see on the left. When you see a blue screen, it means that the virus successfully destroyed um, your startup code, and you have to basically restart or rebuild and re-download your Microsoft account. So that is a really common screen that you will see. And 
the right picture here is an extreme example, but um, this code, what it's doing, what the virus is doing, is basically replicating and duplicating unnecessary tabs. So you can see like a lot of duplicated buttons and tabs. So this virus is currently um, harming the computer by making it unusable. So again, these computer viruses main objective, the hacker's main objective with the computer virus is to steal our personal data by destroying it and maybe requiring some money. So that's what we're going to be talking about when they require money for us to use the computer. So it's called a ransomware. So ransomware is a type of malware which holds victims' information at ransom. So what this means is that the person is required to pay in order to get their information and files back that was on the computer they were using. So these payments are usually big, so they're even up to $1,000. And unless they pay before the time runs out, the files in the victim's computer gets permanently deleted. So it's a really scary way for the hackers to really force us to pay money in order to get our own information back. So you can see on these two pictures here, the left picture shows a really common um, ransomware, actually. This was revealed by the government. So left here, you can see the timer on the left, time left, two days, 23 hours, 57 minutes and 37 seconds. And it explains, oh, what happened to my computer? Your files are encrypted. Many of your documents, photos, videos are no longer accessible. And can I recover my files? Sure, but you have to pay. So how do I pay? So this application or ransomware um, only accepts Bitcoins. So if you're unfamiliar what Bitcoins are, so Bitcoins are basically online currencies. So they're like money, but we have to exchange it online. So the reason why they require for us to pay with Bitcoin is because Bitcoins, when they get transferred, are hard to tell who got the money. So just in case if that person figures out who the hacker is, that won't happen with the Bitcoins. So the picture still on the picture left here, um, if the person does not pay $300 worth of Bitcoins to this address um, for seven days, um, this computer will get destroyed and the files will all get deleted. So basically, this person is threatening the person to pay. So same with same idea with the right picture. Um, it's also requiring um, money to pay. And of course, these are really dangerous and these can be downloaded by some application. But I'm going to be talking about that in a bit. And also... Um, the important thing to mention about ransomware is that um, I suggest, just in case you get it, um, I will help you not get it, but just in case you get it, I recommend not paying the money as it's not guaranteed that they're going to give our files back. And also, um, you become one of the easy targets for the hackers. So let's say you paid $300 and even if you get your files back, the hackers are all trying to target you because they know you're going to pay. So just one thing about ransomware. And moving on to our last um, malware, a type of malware, which is spyware. And it spies your monitor and basically takes your personal information. So sensitive information such as your credit card information or your identity can be stolen and the person can use it at their will. So these malwares are carefully hidden behind files that is downloaded into your computer. So spyware is not really easy to notice. It's not like a bad computer virus, which completely destroys your computer. This spyware is hidden behind your files and they secretly execute a code to make the hackers view your screen, basically. 
So here, um, these are just examples of different login pages. So Facebook login page and Google login page and Instagram login page. But you can see that this person is getting a spyware since there are a couple of things to notice here. Um, when you see on the web address, this triangle or danger sign, that means you're not safe in the website. So either this may be a fake website that has a spyware, or this person may have a spyware that someone may watching them type their Gmail and password. So this is how the spyware will be used by just looking at and spying on people's usernames or passwords and credit card information. Okay, so now we're going to move on to a crime which tricks the user into downloading these malwares. So this crime is called phishing. So phishing is the type of crime which tricks the user into downloading malwares, like I talked about before. Malwares such as like viruses, uh, ransomwares, and spywares. So they use, they trick the users into downloading. So phishing is the act of making people download it in order to steal our personal information again. And these phishing scams are likely to occur in emails or text chats. So these are usually fake alerts or free prizes. So it is a really common scam, a scam, a dishonest scheme, and people fall for it often due to how legitimate they look. So I'll show you an example of what a phishing is. So here, this email was apparently sent by Santa Clara University, and it says your NetBank facility has been suspended. And NetBank customer, we have recently upgraded your internet banking system, something, something, something. By clicking the link below, you can confirm the details. And there is the link. And from an online team. So the reason why this is likely to be a phishing scam is because they are making us click a link, which does not seem like the right URL and something seems to be a bit off. So that makes it a phishing scam. And the picture on the right also shows your delivery has been stopped at our depot. And please resolve this issue here. So a normal person would likely to click the link because they will be probably scared to scared that the fact that their delivery has been stopped at a certain point. So they want to check it out. So they click the link. So you may wonder what happens if you click the link? Well, if you click the link, they might ask you to download a certain file or they might also forcefully like start downloading something onto your computer. So a link is a very dangerous and you should really care be careful with the links since you don't know where it's going to lead you and you might download some unwanted applications. Okay, so now I'm going to be talking about what you should avoid in order to not get these viruses. So first be careful of downloads. So be careful what you download. Some of them can definitely be a virus or a malware trying to steal your private information. Make sure the download is from a real and trustable website. So not all downloads are safe. Remember that. And again, be careful of links like I talked about before. Don't click on any links that seem suspicious or off. So clicking on a malicious one can unsuspectedly install a malware. And again, be sure it is real and hover over the link to make sure it is the right link you want to go to. So let's say you want to go to um, amazon.com. I talked about that earlier where Amazon is a place you would buy on the internet. It's like an online shopping mall. So let's say you want to go amazon.com. 
But the link, when you hover over it, shows something else, some else URL. It's supposed to show Amazon.com, but it doesn't. So that is highly a scam and trying to get you to download something. So do not click on those and make sure the link is correct. And now allowing permissions also. So don't allow permissions from a random or suspicious websites or softwares. So allowing something to make changes to your computer means letting that malicious software harm your computer. So by allowing permissions for that software, you're basically allowing them to do whatever you want to your computer. So you don't know what code is in there. You're just allowing that to do it. So don't allow any permissions from a malicious applications or softwares. So be careful of allowing permissions as well. Okay. Now actually more about the phishing scam that this email is really likely to be a phishing scam. And I want to go through this with you and maybe detect some odd things that are on this email. So this email was sent by Web, Clays, and Lemon, and Grant at weblick.com. That seems true. That seems legitimate. And the title is Don't Miss Out Files. Claim, file your claim now. So a 50 million class action settlement has been reached with the world pay US, and this may be true. But as it gets to the middle of the email, it says, but you must file a claim to receive a payment. So the word of must shows a certain, like a sense of urgency and is trying to maybe click on the link. So filling out the form with take you is supposed to take, is supposed to say will take you. And you can see the spelling errors that are common in phishing scams. And a usual company would not make these small spelling mistakes. So be careful of that. So it also says you can claim, you can file your claim online by clicking on this link. So this link is supposed to address us to kccsecure.com. So this does not match the sending email domain. So this link will not probably send us to the file claiming website. And you can just continue on and seeing if this applies to you, please write here and there is an email, but why would they write an email in the email since it, since they can already reply to that email. And by the end of this email, you should really be afraid and think of course, you should identify this as a possible phishing scam. And there is not even a contact name down below. So these are some red flags that you guys might want to see and detect while reading your emails or texts. So I have this short video for you, which basically reviews all the things that I have talked about. Remote hovers around a thousand folks and they all use Notion. How does malware How does malware work? Malware is a type of malicious software that can damage your computer, steal your data, or even harm your health. In this video, we will discuss how malware works and the different types that are out there. We will also give you tips on how to protect yourself from this type of software and keep your computer safe. Let's start. The term malware refers to harmful software that disrupts or manipulates an electronic device's normal operation. Point one malware can infect personal computers, smartphones, tablets, servers, and even equipment, basically any device with computing capabilities. The first form of malware ever developed was the computer virus. Point two, as technology, computing and software have advanced during the last two decades, so has the sophistication and prevalence of malicious software. Read on to learn more about how malware and ransomware work and what you can do to protect yourself.
How does malware work? Malware typically infects a machine by tricking users into clicking and or installing a program that they shouldn't from the internet. When the click or installation occurs, the malicious code executes actions that the user doesn't anticipate or intend, which could include self-replication in different parts of the file system, installing applications that capture keystrokes or commandeer system resources, often running without the user being aware, while slowing the system down considerably, blocking access to files, programs or even the system itself, sometimes forcing the user to make a payment to regain access, bombarding a browser or desktop with ads, breaking essential system components and rendering a device inoperable. Execution can be triggered by a number of user actions, but the most common trigger is a click, typically on a link or pop-up. The descriptions might say something provocative like, claim your prize or your account has been compromised. Please log in and verify recent charges. Many times, a pop-up will be displayed immediately after clicking the link, such as, your system is infected. Click here to run a scan. The next click often triggers the download of a malicious payload, even if the user doesn't select one of the options and instead tries to close the program using the corner X. Malware can also be disguised as a program or app that claims to convert PDFs, unzip files, find product discounts or provide caller ID functionality on a smartphone. But once the program is downloaded, it begins making unauthorized changes on the system, monitoring user behavior, displaying pop-ups, changing search engine results, adding icons to a desktop or redirecting popular sites. Malware Types Malware can be delivered in several different forms, depending on the intention of the person who developed it. A computer virus is designed to reproduce itself and spread from one file or program to another, and, less frequently, to other computers on a network. Trojan horses masquerade as harmless programs, but when activated, they damage their host computer. Unlike a virus, a Trojan horse does not replicate itself, instead, this malware usually attempts to steal files or passwords. Computer worms replicate themselves to spread through a network. A computer worm will spread across computer networks, as opposed to viruses that usually spread from file to file on a single computer. Spyware infects and operates on a user's computer to monitor user activity and extract information. For instance, while spyware runs on a machine, the hacker can monitor the programs used and sites visited while tracking keystrokes to determine login and password information. Point three. Logic bombs are concealed in programs and can either be triggered by a user's action or released at a predetermined time. They can crash a system or wipe a hard drive. Ransomware Ransomware is a form of malware that locks a user's computer and then demands a ransom payment to restore access. Ransomware can be delivered to a computer if a user clicks on a link that contains malware. Point for it often resembles a phishing attack which is an attempt to gather personal information like passwords, banking details, credit card numbers or even social security numbers. Phishing involves a scammer sending emails that can appear harmless and typically ask the recipient to click a link or download a file. These messages look like they're from a legitimate, trustworthy source, but once the recipient clicks or downloads, the hacker gains access to the user's computer. Ransomware often begins as a phishing attack, but it goes a step further in inciting panic that may urge users to quickly take the hacker's desired action. Once a user has clicked a link or file for download, the ransomware freezes their computer. It then attempts to blackmail the user into paying money for the scammer to return the user's stolen personal information. This form of malware relies on fear, that is, the fear that a user has engaged in illegal activity online. By posing as a law enforcement agency, a ransomware purveyor can intimidate and coerce a user while seeming legitimate. In other instances, ransomware will simply lock down a user's entire machine, including important files and programs, and demand a payment. Ransomware may not only withhold access to a machine, but also threaten to delete files unless payment is made. Signs of Malware Not all malware is as obvious as ransomware. In fact, some malware runs almost silently in the background of your device. Here are several signs that you may have fallen victim to malware. Ads that pop up seconds after a page loads. Ads that pop up when you're not using your internet browser. Redirect chains or when a website URL keeps changing and sending you to other pages. 
Your email or social media contacts receive strange messages from you that you didn't send. Your system slows down. You can't access the control panel on a Windows system. If you suspect malware is active on your device, disconnect it from the internet and take steps to remove the malicious software. Find instructions from a trusted source, such as a well-known technology service provider. So now you know how malware can cause so much damage. Have you ever come across any suspicious app? Okay, so that was a recap of what we basically learned, talking about all the possible malwares that can affect our computers. And just remember that all of these start with a phishing attack. And just remember that from a phishing attack, it makes the user, tricks the user into downloading or clicking on a certain link, which may cause a download. So is your computer safe right now? Uh, that would be yes or no. So make sure that you didn't download anything on your computer that looks malicious or allowed any permissions from malicious apps. So a malware usually spreads through a network. This means if one computer is infected with computer virus, the other devices that share your same network may also be infected. So it's important to know that everything is connected in a network, like I talked about on my previous lecture. And from that network, your computer is not the only one that may get infected. Through the network, it may connect to your phone, your Wi-Fi, or let's say your whole internet system may shut down due to one virus that you downloaded to your computer. So what should you do? So when you get a virus or malware, make sure your Wi-Fi, either wired or wireless, are off and is not connected to any other devices. And like I talked about before, everything is connected with the network. And the important thing that you should do first is to disconnect from the entire network. So also one thing to mention is that you should change your password often. And this would reduce the risk of being hacked since your password is always being resetted. And to better prevent against the malware, an antivirus should be installed. So you may ask, what is an antivirus? So an antivirus software prevents any unexpected soft softwares from changing your computer program and deletes or quarantines any weird applications or notifications. So here are some examples of antiviruses. So the most common ones are McAfee, Bitdefender, and Norton, AVG, and the Windows Defender, and Malwarebytes. So these are all the antivirus softwares which prevents users, which prevents the malwares from making any unexpected changes to your computer. And these are not always helpful. So but these definitely help getting your computer not get a virus, but they do, some of them have like weaknesses, which the viruses may go through and maybe possibly go through the entire antivirus system. So actually I prepared a video which shows like the action between the antivirus and the malware. So it's basically a video about a malware versus an antivirus. Mobile games are going big. Free Fire Max. So basically, um, this video will talk about um, how an antivirus may defend against the malware. And it's more of an entertaining video, so I hope you guys just enjoy it. It's not an education. 
Oh my God. I've unleashed dangerous viruses on some computers and now it's time to put them up against antiviruses. No more hesitation. Let's go ahead and get this video started. ICO versus Windows Defender. I have the ICO.exe virus on this SanDisk USB. So I'm going to go into the virus and threat protection settings on the computer. And I'm going to go ahead and disconnect from the internet. Now I'm going to go ahead, hit ICO.exe, run as administrator. Do you want to allow this app from an unknown publisher to make changes to your device? ICO.exe. Run malware? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Let's see what's going to happen while running the ICO virus. Now, I'm in the virus and threat protection settings. It literally, look, it closes, it minimizes the virus and threat protection settings. I didn't close that. I didn't close that. Oh, this is not good. Look where my Windows security is. Okay, watch. I'm going to try dragging it. Virus and threat protection on, on, on. Come on. Yeah. Oh, real time protection is on. We might be able to delete the virus. Virus and threat protection is on, bro. Oh, this is not good. Oh, this is not good. Oh dear God. Threats found. Threats found. Oh my God, I might remove it. We might be able to remove the virus. Once Microsoft Windows security found the virus, the virus actually started getting a lot worse. Oh, this is bad. Yo, we have to remove this. Threats found. Current threats. Oh my God. Please restart your device. I don't think that's a good idea there, pal. It found the Trojan. It found the virus. Windows security found the virus, but it's not doing anything with the virus. So once you have the virus already installed in your computer and you have Windows security, it's not going to be able to delete the virus. It's telling me actions needed. I'm not going to restart the computer. That's going to destroy the boot sector of the computer. Start actions. Oh my god. Start actions. Start actions. Remove. I might be able to defeat the virus before the virus destroys the boot sector of the computer. Remove. 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 Start actions. Start actions. Remove. Remove the virus. Oh no. Please remove the virus. Oh. Allowed threats. Why is it allowed? Steam just opened. That's not good. Oh my god. It's telling me that the threat is allowed on my computer. So this virus, the ICO.exe virus, you can't mess with this. Oh my God. Oh, this is bad. I can still play games on this computer. If you guys want to see me play games while downloading dangerous computer viruses, go ahead and click the thing that just appeared on the top right of the screen. It's a banger. Look at Welcome to the Game, which is a dark web game. Did you see that? Oh no, this is so bad, dude. Oh, this is so bad. The virus is... Oh, no, no. So before I can even take the virus off the computer, it's telling me my device ran into a problem and needs to restart. 62% complete, 82% complete, and 100% complete. And the computer's boot sector is probably absolutely destroyed. There's no operating system installed in this virtual machine. Press any key to boot from CD or DVD. Enter, 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 enter. I got the Windows logo to appear. I think I just fixed the computer. Maybe Windows Defender is going to beat the ICO.exe virus. One way to find out. It's starting Windows. That's Windows 11. I thought I beat the virus and I was quite surprised. I waited for Windows to finish booting so I can see all the damage, but I literally lost every file I had on that PC. It took me back to the Windows setup. I have to reinstall Windows from scratch. The ICO.exe virus literally wiped the entire computer and now I have to start from scratch. I have to click install now. Oh my God, the viruses are still plugged in, which is probably a bad idea. These are probably corrupt right now. I guess I'm gonna have to install. So because everything was deleted, I had to completely reinstall everything. Bitdefender versus Bonsai Buddy. So I went ahead and stuck the USB into the computer so we can go ahead and do Bitdefender versus Bonsai Buddy. So we have Bonsify and Bonsai Buddy and we're gonna take both these computer viruses, run them at once and put them against the Bitdefender antivirus. Bonsai Buddy, do you wanna allow this app from an unknown publisher to make changes to your device? Bonsai one. So, actually, this is an example of a allowing permission notification. So once this shows up, do you want to allow this app from an unknown publisher to change to make changes to your device? Um, if this if this was like a normal like life, you would click no, of course, since you don't want an unknown application to change your device. But this person is basically just clicking yes to test like a malware against an antivirus. So usually you would click no, so.
1.exe. Oh, hello. Hello, I'm on Lee. I'm here to destroy your computer again, but this time, it's an actual destruction. The first thing I'll do is to inject my duty into all programs that start from now. I would not recommend to restart your system from now, because it might be a bit unstable. If you wait a bit for me, I will do even more than just that. I will spam your computer with random executables, inject my code into them too, and let them corrupt your computer. Your programs are my slaves from then. Doesn't that sound great? Okay, let's open up the antivirus. We're turning on all of the virus and threat protection settings. We're going to do a quick scan. Let's see if it's going to work. Disinfection in process. Detected threats are being disinfected. Please wait until the process is complete. Bitdefender has moved multiple detected threats to quarantine. Look at all these infected viruses. Look at this. Bonsify.exe. Bonsify.exe. This is the download for Bonsify. Restart. It's updating my computer right now. I have no idea why. The antivirus solution installed in your system is cleaning your computer. The cleaning process has finished successfully. All right, so Bitdefender just got rid of bonsai buddy let's see if the computer has been completely clean oh my god we have the windows logo let's take a look at what happened something didn't go as planned no need to worry undoing changes please keep your computer on there it is we're about to find out if bonsai buddy is still infecting the computer we have the bonsai buddy file there christmas tree just popped up what the hell a penguin just popped up what the hell why did this thing keep popping up bonsai buddy setup wizard what why did bonsai buddy just Oh, this is not good. BonsaiBuddy.tk. Oh, this is... So my antivirus software just popped up. It says I'm safe. Potentially unwanted application blocked from your device. BonsaiBuddy432 is infected with... Oh my god. Why is BonsaiBuddy installing again on my computer? So BonsaiBuddy is just chilling on my computer right now. And I have a bunch of Christmas trees. So the conclusion of this part of the video is that Bitdefender is actually whipping BonsaiBuddy's bum. Bitdefender is doing the disinfection, as you can see on the bottom right of the screen. Bitdefender absolutely slaps. It's not letting the virus infiltrate my computer, so I can just click delete and the virus completely gone from the computer as you can see every single infected file on my computer has been completely deleted every single bonsai buddy file that i wanted to download online would not download it bitdefender virus absolutely takes this w muscovium versus kaspersky so i'm gonna go ahead and download the muscovium virus while opening up the kaspersky antivirus to see what would happen for some reason i have a bunch of christmas trees on my desktop i don't know where those came from i don't know if those came from the previous viruses infiltrating my new v but you can see that if I open up Kaspersky, it actually says protection is disabled. On the bottom of the screen, it doesn't show that any of these Christmas things are open. My virus and threat protection is actually off on my computer. So I close all the Christmas trees on the screen and I'm going to go ahead and plug in this USB over here and it's going to pop up on the screen. Kaspersky already tried to delete the viruses off the USB, but I clicked skip. So this is the Muscovium virus. I'm going to go ahead and run as administrator. Do you want to allow this app from an unknown publisher to make changes to your device? Muscovium.exe. We're gonna hit yes. This malware corrupts the MBR. Are you sure you want to run it? Basically, it's saying that I'm gonna have to reinstall Windows after this virus is done running, but I'm gonna go ahead and run the Kaspersky antivirus while this virus is running. This is the last warning. The creator of this malware will not be responsible for any destruction caused by this malware. Are you sure you want to run it? Yes. So basically, he tested some certain antiviruses with the malwares and it you can see that some of them actually was successful in defending the malwares so it just shows how important antiviruses are and certain ones can definitely defend against some of the most dangerous viruses that are on the internet so important to keep your antivirus on at all times and I would just like to do a scam test. So it is a simple test I have created to see if you are scam likely or not. So here is the first picture, um, the first email, and it's supposedly written by HMRC. So, dear customer, owing to a miscalculation of your tax in the last year, you have an outstanding tax refund of £5,419. So, something, something. To receive your refund, you must claim in form of urgency. And your reference number is this. Start your claim, and that is a link. If you see anything that is highlighted in blue, that is a link. And you should probably not click it. So... This is a test. So do you guys think this is a scam or not a scam? So. Uh, 
So would you guys click on this link to claim your prize or would you suspect that this is a scam? So he was asking you guys, um, why might this be a scam? And the possible answer to that is because you can see the sense of urgency as it says you need to submit a claim form as a matter of urgency. So it's urgently making you click on the link. And you can see that the link on start your claim is not visible. That means that the URL can be anything. So make sure to hover that link around to check out the link URL and make sure it is the right address that you want to go to. So, and yes, you guys are right. This is a scam. So do not click on the link if you receive these types. And now um, to the IA bank. So this is supposedly from an IA bank. So dear the customer, your account has been locked because of suspicious activity. Please visit the internet bank at www.ia.com.uk to validate your details and unlock your account. So would you guys think this is a scam or not a scam? Just have your ideas in mind and, well, if you guys think that this is a scam, then um, you guys are correct. And it is pretty obvious here that you can see that it's making us click a link because of a suspicious activity. And these type of banks or companies will probably not insert a link into a validation request. They would just send us an email to maybe go to their website and check it there. And they wouldn't send a separate link with a text message. So from these suspicions, I would suggest that you should not click the link. And you can always go to their website by using a Chrome browser or any type of software running program. So I have a couple more. Um, this is actually a call. And this phone call, this person said, hello, this is Mark calling from IA Bank. I'm just ringing to let you know that there has been some suspicious activity on your current account. I need to run through your recent transactions just to check that they were actually made by you. I need to confirm who I'm talking to. So could you tell me your date of birth and confirm what accounts you hold with us? So this person is asking us my name and my name of my date of birth. So it is pretty uh, private information. And it the date of birth is our private and personal information. What? So do you think this is a scam or not by telling, by letting them know that you're of your date of birth? It's scam or not. It's not. Someone told me that they're asking me to buy a piece of bread. 
So this is actually not a scam since you can see here that um this person is not making us go and download certain applications or softwares. It's asking you your date of birth, but your date of birth is still your personal and private information. But this person is asking us to sending us a notification that some suspicious activity on your current account. So they just want your date of birth to confirm your account. So if this were to be a scam, they would most likely ask for an ID and a password. So if they ask for an ID and a password, that is most likely to be a scam since your password is really something private and you should not tell other people. But your date of birth, just to confirm your transaction, this would not be a scam. And this is most likely from a legitimate bank. And I'll, I'm just saying most likely because this still can turn out to be a scam if this person asks you to do something else later. So, But from this, you can tell that this is not a scam. They are just calling you to confirm whether it's true. They are not asking you to click on the link like the other one I'm referring to. You understand? And also, even if I told you that that was not a scam, if you're not comfortable with telling your private information, you can just tell the person that you don't want to tell your date of birth. And you can ask the person, is there any other way to check my account and how it has been suspected of unusual activity? So you can always tell the person that you don't want to tell your private information. So for this one, it's quite sure, but um, hello, I'm calling you from Windows Technical Support. We have detected a possible virus on your PC. Are you aware of this? So how many people think this is a scam? Um, can you possibly like raise your hand or <laughs> if you think this is a scam? Yes. Yes. Are you okay, they said it's not a scam. They said it's not a scam. Yes. From this, um, it is really tricky to tell, but it actually most likely is to be a scam, since one obvious obvious um. Well, not so obvious evidence you can see here is that this person is from a Windows technical support. So if you don't know what Windows technical support is, that is the technical support company which works for Windows. So a huge company like them, like Windows, would not call us because there might be a virus on my device. So from this, the person is not asking you to download and go to a certain link specifically, but this person is most likely to tell you to download something else by convincing they're real. So if you hear some line saying that I'm from this specific like Windows company or some big company that they would not usually call back, then 
I would most likely just hang up. Or uh, if you still think that you have a virus, just maybe continue on talking until they say you have to download something, which you shouldn't. So from this, it was a bit tricky, but you can tell that Windows technical support does not call you. You have to call them if you have a virus. So that is an important thing to notice. And this is actually the last one. So you turn on your computer and a box pops up telling you that updates are available for your computer. And there is a button called install updates. Would you click the button saying install updates or would you suspect this is a scam? Um, it's just the last question, so. Well, from this, we can tell that it's from an actual setting from Windows. So you can see that this app was open from control panel. A control panel yes, basically. Um... Do you think this is a scam or? I think it's not a scam. Yeah, they're correct. It's not a scam because it's from a Windows update. You can see on the title here, it's called Windows Update. And you can see that this Windows update was originated from control panel and system and security to Windows. Update. So what this means is that this person opened up a control panel, which is automatically installed in your computer. And it's where you would search up every applications on your computer. That's what control panel is. So this was open from control panel, which is legitimate. And it is a part of your PC, your computer. So since this update is essential, you should probably click install updates. Um, since Installing updates will most likely improve the chance of you not getting any viruses or malwares. So it's always important to keep your computer updated if this pops up. So it's actually not a scam and you should probably install updates. Okay, so I would like to wrap up and just like to say that always stay safe on the internet. So the internet is, although it's a very interesting place, but also a very dangerous place as well. And be sure that your data is safe by not downloading any suspicious softwares, not clicking on random links, and not allowing suspicious permissions. So not all of them are malicious, but they certainly can be. And I even almost got a virus to say to you guys. And to prevent it, again, I would like to just wrap up by reminding you guys of the antiviruses available. And if you don't remember, um, I would like to just point out that first, when you get a virus, you should disconnect your computer from any other sources. That's number one. And number two, when you resolve the virus, um, you should probably install an antivirus software, or even before you get a malware, you should install an antivirus software, since it really does a great job protecting against malwares. And third, you should change your password again for everything. So once the computer gets hacked, you don't know if what information the hackers stole from you. So it's important to change all your passwords again. Once your computer gets hacked, or even if it does not get hacked, it's a good idea to change your passwords frequently. And yeah, that was it for today. And again, thank you for watching. And I hope you stay safe on the internet. And um, do you guys have any questions that you guys want to ask? Or if you guys are still curious in certain malwares or you can ask me now.
If, if you guys don't have any questions, it's okay. Um, you guys have any questions to ask? Do you have any questions to ask? But if you don't have any questions, it's okay. And um, you can see my video on my YouTube channel, and I upload it there so you guys can rewatch it if you guys don't understand something. Maybe one of the students wants to ask a question. Yeah, Sorry, I can't. which of them? About four virus. Which of them? Sorry, I couldn't hear you correctly. Um can someone repeat the question? Okay, he was he was talking about the spyway. He said if you can highlight more the spy. What about the spyware? Um, can they? Uh... Well, a spyware basically, um, it is, um, that it can be downloaded. So if you're curious about the spyware, so it is a certain code again, and if it is suspiciously behind the file that you download from a certain website. It is a type of malware. So it comes from a download. So remember that everything comes from a click or download. So once you have your malware, a spyware, it will not be obvious like others like ransomware and viruses. So it will not demand you anything. It's going to suspiciously stay behind your files and probably execute a code which makes the hacker view your screen. So you may notice that some web websites may blur the passwords, but um, the spyware, it is really advanced and they can also copy your keystrokes, which means that whatever you type, they can see on their screen. So they execute a code where it's going to copy your keystrokes and they can also see your screen. So it is, again, a type of malware which runs secretly behind your computer. So to remove it, again, it's not obvious, but you can always detect it from an antivirus. So an antivirus has this option to scan your computer. So a spyware, like a secret spyware, can be detected by that. So, yeah, I hope you... I hope I answered your question. So, um, yeah. All right, Jimmy. Then you put the answer in your question. All right. Okay, Jimmy. I also have a question for you. Please, with the Windows Defender, yes. can we, aside from the other other softwares, is that also good to prevent? Um, these small ways and then spy ways and the other virus. So you're asking if Windows Defender can successfully defend against malware? Exactly. So, well, Windows Defender, exactly. yeah, automatically installed to your Windows PC, so you don't have to pay anything. So for other antiviruses, you have to pay, but Windows virus is not as strong as other antiviruses, but Windows Defender is currently still developing. So they're trying to make the antivirus of Windows better. But um, I would recommend just 
staying with Windows um, security and make sure every threat protection is on from your Windows protection and Windows antivirus. And um, I would actually not recommend buying an antivirus. And since Windows Defender does a pretty good job and you can scan any viruses from Windows security as well. So yeah, Windows Defender is a pretty good option, a free option, which is automatically installed in your computer. So yeah, I would stick with Windows Defender if possible. I'm coming back. 